Hi, I'm Lisa Rubel from Love to Color My World. If you've got a pack of five inch squares sitting on your shelf in your sewing room and just waiting for the perfect project to use them for, I've got a suggestion for you. The mini checkerboard quilt, which is a free pattern download available with the purchase of a set of five inch squares from Sit and Sew Fabrics, is a quick and fun quilt that combines applique and piecing. And I'm going to show you how to put it together. So to put together the mini checkerboard quilt, you're going to need a pack of five inch squares. You're going to need fusible web and then a contrasting fabric, either a tonal or a solid that uh, that contrasts with your existing fabrics. I've got white to use for that. And the pattern comes with a template for the circle on the back. And you'll need to trace 21 of this circle onto the paper side of fusible web. And you'll need to cut 21 white squares from fabric, five inch white squares. And that's what we'll be fusing our circles onto. So I'm going to demonstrate a row's worth of this quilt. So I've got six fabrics to work with right here. And I've got my circle shape traced onto the paper side of three different pieces of fusible web. What I'm gonna do is choose three of these fabrics to be, let's see, to be my circles. And I'm going to put my paper circle sticky side down on the wrong side of one of the five inch squares and press it until it adheres. When you cut out your circles, you wanna be about quarter to a half inch outside the drawn line, but you also wanna make sure that you are close enough around that the whole fusible web shape fits on your five inch square. Otherwise, you'll be adhering some of the fusible web to your ironing board. No one wants to do that. So you'll iron each of your 21 circle shapes onto 21 different squares from your uh, pack of five inch squares. And then the next step is to cut all 21 of those out on the drawn lines. And I'm gonna show you a tip that I like to use for fusible web. And that is sometimes after I've cut my shape and I go to peel away the two layers, um, I end up fraying the edge of the fabric because I, it's just too hard to get that edge away. So what I do when I am about to cut the fab or to cut on my drawn line is I just peel it back just enough that it's beyond that line. So I've loosened it, but then I still keep it on there. So then when I go and cut out my circle very carefully, And if you're not accustomed to spending a lot of time cutting, you may wanna cut you know, five or so of these at a time and then fuse them in place and then come back and cut five more just to get, give your hand a break. But then when I, when I look, it's very easy to separate the paper backing from my fused circle because I lifted up that edge. So go ahead and get all of your circles cut out, and then we'll talk about fusing and assembling the different pieces together. How are your hands feeling after cutting out all of those little circles? Right, you've got your 21 circles cut, and you've got 21 squares of your uh, contrasting fabric, like I said, in my case, white. Now, I like to have my circles centered as exactly as possible on my squares. So the way that I do that is I will just lightly press the square in half in both directions. Just enough that I can see those lines just very faintly. And then I will do the same with my applique circle. But in this case, I'm just going to finger press and not actually press with the iron. I take my backing off. And then what I can do is follow, if I can see them, follow and line up those almost crosshairs, those vertical and horizontal lines of the circle 
with the ones on the background shape. And then I know that my uh, circle is centered in the middle of the square. And I'm going to press it in place, which will also take care of getting rid of those fold lines for you so that they're not on the block anymore. Okay. Do the same thing with another one. I'm going to press it in half. And if you're using a white-on-white a -white fabric like I am, just want to double check with each one that uh, the print side of your fabric is right side up. Sometimes those can be hard to tell if they are or not. Okay, take another circle and finger press it in half in both directions. And really, you need the finger pressing to be out at the edges because that's where you're lining up the lines. It doesn't have to be in the middle quite so much. And I'm gonna line up those folds and press it in place. Okay, so you'll do that with all 21 of your circle blocks and then you can use a decorative stitch to secure the applique to each of the squares. You can use a zigzag or a buttonhole or just a straight stitch if you like. Uh, you can also wait until you get to the point of quilting to do this if you'd rather do it that way. It's up to you, but especially if it's a quilt that's going to be used and handled, you want something besides just the fusible applique just the fusible web that's holding those applique pieces in place. So some sort of stitching would be really good for that. So get all 21 of those done and then we'll look at how we assemble a row. All right, once you've got all your circles done, it is time to assemble a row. And each row in this quilt will have three of the circle blocks and three of your five inch squares. Now if you look at the quilt layout diagram, it looks like every other row is different, but really that's just rotating the row so that your blocks alternate. So you're gonna make seven rows that have three of each type of block. And the one thing you want to do when you are pressing after uh, you've joined the blocks into a row is to alternate how you press the seam. So in row one, press all of your seams in one direction. And then in row two, press your seams in the other direction. And that way, when you're joining the rows together, you can uh, get the seams lined up with the seam allowances nesting, and you'll get real nice uh, corners where those four pieces meet. So for this quilt, all you need to do is sew the blocks and the squares into rows, join the rows to complete the quilt top, and then you can add backing and batting and baste the three layers together, quilt it however you'd like, and then bind the quilt, and it's done. Like I said, it's a great baby quilt. It's a great, I just wanna sew a quilt this afternoon. It's a fantastic way to use up five inch squares if you've got a pack laying around. And if you do not uh, have a pack laying around, you can head over to Sit and Sew Fabrics and they have all different five inch square packs on the website. And then you can choose which pattern you want to download to go with your purchase, including this mini checkerboard quilt.